welcome to a day in the life with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So today it's a Saturday and I managed to get myself up for 7.30am without hitting that snooze button. I know it's a bad habit but the first thing I tend to do is use my phone to catch up on any missed notifications from last night. And I also do my very best to reply to any comments on social media. So be sure to drop me a follow on there as I'm trying to remain consistent by posting daily content. But it was time to get myself ready as I've got quite a busy day scheduled ahead. If you don't already know, we don't get a lot of sunshine here in London. But today it's surprisingly sunny, so it's always nice to let in a bit of sunshine into the room. The sky is also clear blue, but let's hope that don't change up later in the day. The first thing I like to do after getting up is to make my bed simply because it prepares me for the day and I'll also come to a well-made bed. I then went to brush my teeth and wash my face. With my facial hair, I know it's not really grown out, but I do like to keep things well-maintained and tidy. I've been using this trimmer by Seajoy, which comes with a range of cool accessories. Firstly, I like to start off by lining everything up using the trimmer, and then I would use the shaver head for that clean finish below the neckline. Once all done, I would usually hop in for a quick shower and then towel dry my hair. Then I'd get myself all ready for the day. I know it's going to be fairly cold outside, so putting on a few layers is a must. Also, I am running kind of late, so I'll just grab a coffee on the way. Hey guys, good morning. So I'm basically doing a quick day in the life video of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So it's currently 9.30 a.m. and I'm about to go get breakfast. And yeah, my phone's currently on 99%, although I did use it a few times in the morning. Also, I've been using the phone at full brightness while listening to music on my Sony XM4 headphones. But yeah, let's go and grab that coffee. As per usual, Apple Pay works flawlessly on this phone. All my cards are in my Apple wallet, making it super quick when it comes to making payments on the go. And yes, I am a bit of a sugar addict, hence why I'm adding lots of sugar. All right, now let's make ways to my local park. Oh. So guys, so I just basically picked up my coffee and um, I'm just basically chilling in my favorite spot. And what I'm pretty much just gonna do is just explore this phone using Instagram and pretty much most of my regular apps like Twitter, Twitter, Snapchat, and all those apps and just pretty much seeing how this phone holds up. So far it's 9.52 a.m. and I'm currently on 95% and I have been using this to listen to music and all that stuff. And also the camera on this phone has been quite the headline as well with the five times telephoto lens. So what I'm basically gonna be doing is I mean, for the first time shooting outdoors with this phone. And yeah, I'm super excited to test out the camera on this phone. So yeah, let's go. Hey guys, what is up? So I'm just basically testing out the front camera on this phone and I think it looks great. I mean, it's kept the dynamic ranges. Everything looks really good. So props to Apple for that one. I ended up taking some photos in raw format and had them edited in Lightroom to see how it performs. And I'm really happy with the outcome. I feel as though this phone can easily keep up with the more professional expensive cameras but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. As you can see the deep shadows and sunlight highlights produce extreme dynamic range and in my experience only modern professional cameras can handle that. And since I edit my photos in Lightroom Mobile, the Pro Raw format truly gives you that flexibility you need to tweak photos to your liking. However, one thing that annoyed me was not being able to shoot in 24 megapixels because it isn't available when shooting Pro Raw. Your choices are only 12 megapixels or 48 megapixels. I found that really annoying because 48 megapixels Pro Raw files get absolutely massive. Honestly, when using this phone outdoors, it was amazing. With the 6.7 inch Super Retina XDR OLED display, that's super responsive. And I love that Apple have reduced the bezels, making them ultra thin. The display remains beautiful and bright with a maximum brightness of 2000 nits, which means I had no trouble using it outdoors in bright sunlight. Its wide color gamut ensures a rich display and the 2 million to 1 contrast ratio provides that platform to showcase the inkiest of blacks. 
and the ProMotion display is just super smooth. I then jumped on a FaceTime call for around an hour and the camera was absolutely amazing. Honestly, if you're someone that jumps on FaceTime calls often, the 12 megapixel front camera on this phone will not disappoint. But for now, let's make ways to my studio. Alexa, turn on all the lights. The first thing that I usually do is open up Notion and look at what my day is going to look like. I had a bit of a late start today since I was filming this day in the life video, but I have got quite a few things to tick off today. My workflow and weekly plans are all on Notion as it has helped me to keep things organized. I've also got a few other custom templates to help me refine my workflow and boost productivity. If you guys would like to check them out, I will leave a link in the description below. While working, I like to put on a podcast in the background. I'm currently listening to Words of Wisdom by Riz Iqbal, which is very interesting. Oh, and by the way, the speaker on this phone sounds amazing. Yeah, like when I was younger, I used to do music. Yes, I was always used to like the stage. I used mm -hmm. to perform and stuff and make music. But then I connected it to Alexa while going through some of the things that need to get done. I must say, I really love the dynamic island, it just works perfectly. Alright guys, alright, so just give me a second, I'm going to pause it. Okay guys, so I basically received a package from Saramonic, and it's this one right here. So what I'm basically going to do is do an unboxing video on this product. But here's the twist, I'm going to be filming it using my iphone 15 pro max rather than my dslr camera which is actually a first because i feel like it will be a good test to see how it performs and yeah so i guess let's just go ahead and unbox it oh and by the way i really love how they wrote my name right here it's like it's taken up pretty much the whole side of the box and so yeah thank you ceremonic all right so slight change of plans my tube light was actually not charged so I'm going to leave it to charge while I go ahead and film another reel for this mechanical keyboard. I filmed it using ProRes Log at 4K. I don't usually film my reels using a phone, but I really wanted to see how well this phone can perform. I was able to switch between different zoom lengths which allowed me to get those nice close up shots. I then colour graded the footage to my liking and it did not turn out bad at all. I did make the mistake of not locking the exposure, but aside from that, it looks fairly good. We then got some food to eat and I decided to watch a movie whilst I was eating. The screen's resolution comes at 2796 by 1290 at 460 ppi and it truly allows you to see how sharp it is. Before it got dark, I wanted to go outside and get some more outdoor shots and test out the camera a little more. And yes, the sun has disappeared. Welcome to London guys. But I'm going to take some shots and see how it does. I'm filming in 4K and making use of the different zoom levels. When using the 5x telephoto lens, the footage looks sharp. But after you switch to digital zoom, you can truly see that it no longer holds up. I went all the way up to 15x and you can see that you lose a lot of the quality. When zooming, it's super handy to have that box on the top left hand side of the screen to give you an idea of where you're at in the frame. I also filmed an aeroplane using the 15x zoom and I wasn't that impressed with the focus and stabilisation, but it still managed to eventually focus. But it's fair to say that once you make that switch to digital zoom, you truly are sacrificing a lot of the quality. The image will end up looking fuzzy and this is where I feel Samsung are so much better than Apple. Another video test was taken using the different zoom ranges and I must say they were all perfect with the right amount of clarity and the dynamic range was spot on. I love how well the 5x telephoto lens was able to preserve the details of the buildings and the clouds in the sky. On the photography side of things it did not disappoint at all. Using the different zoom ranges, the images came out perfect and did not look washed out. 
When recording video, you can truly see how well it preserves the details across the different lenses used ranging from 13mm ultra wide, the 24mm lens and the 120mm telephoto lens. When I was the subject, here are some photo samples ranging from 0.5x all the way up to 15x and I think they look great in terms of colour and sharpness and also the images are not overly processed keeping the colours very natural. When zooming in further, you can truly see how well it was able to render my skin tones accurately and maintain that sharpness. When taking portrait photography using the front camera, you can see how it preserves the natural colours, sharpness and dynamic range. In all honesty, I was not expecting it to perform that way. Using the front camera for video, the autofocus was very sharp and kept me in focus at all times and the colour rendering was spot on once again. Testing out the action mode feature, the footage was perfectly stabilised making it awesome for those cinematic shots. Finally I tried out portrait photography using the main camera and here are the results. I mean it did not disappoint and I genuinely think the results compared to a lot of the high end cameras with how well it blurred out the background, the colours were rendered to perfection as well as a lot of the fine detail at the centre of the frame. Overall I think the camera on this phone is an absolute beast especially with the addition of the 5x telephoto lens and it truly did not disappoint on both the video and photography side of things. Once again the brightness on this phone is perfect when outdoors. If you plan to use maps in bright daylight, rest assured that this phone will not disappoint. But it was time to get back to the studio before I head to my calisthenic session. Now that the tube light was all charged up, I went ahead and filmed a reel in ProRes log and here are the results. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I wanted to make sure I have the footage edited and ready to upload. Honestly, the airdrop feature never disappoints, especially since my workflow ecosystem is based around Apple products, so it's super convenient for me. And when putting both phones together, you can do this. Now, how cool is that? When writing captions on Instagram, the keyboard on this phone is amazing, especially when coupled with the haptic feedback feature, which makes it really good to type on. The design is not much of an upgrade, but the switch to titanium done it for me. My one comes in this beautiful blue finish, which not only caught my eye, but also adds a touch of elegance to the device. Apple's decision to ditch the stainless steel build and switch to a titanium alloy which makes up the frame and is also integrated into the back glass which contributed significantly to the noticeable weight reduction of 19 grams. Additionally, Apple has very intelligently shaved off a millimetre or so from the screen bezels which is very impressive if you ask me. The phone's softer contoured edging offers a more comfortable grip as does a slightly silkier texture of the glass. I really like the sleek aesthetics of this phone, however it still attracts fingerprints. One noteworthy design change is the introduction of the new action button, which replaces the long-standing mute switch on the left edge, just above the volume buttons, and it's activated with a long press. We have the volume buttons on the left-hand side, and finally we have the USB-C port on the bottom edge, which has been long awaited. I know that I didn't really mention the action button much because it really isn't something too appealing for myself. Maybe it's because I haven't really made full use of it, Although initially I ended up setting it to open the camera, but in all honesty it wasn't something that I see myself using every day. Maybe I'm not used to it or I just need to customise it further to do something more useful. For now I've got it set on the silent mode activation and that's good enough for me. I'm someone that likes to use a phone case so my guys at Andar kindly sent me their really cool leather phone case in olive. It feels and looks absolutely amazing. I love the design of their cases with high quality premium leather. We have the logo engraved on the side followed by the protruding buttons that are in a dark colour to add that extra bit of contrast. I'm also going to couple it with the MagSafe card holder by Exter to complement it further. Alright now it's time to get ready for my calisthenic session. So hey guys what is up so it's currently 5.30pm. Um, so I'm basically going to go head out for a quick calisthenic session. So for those of you that follow me on Instagram, I've recently started calisthenics over in, I mean over during summer and I've kind of been pretty serious at it at the moment. 
and I actually wanted to test out the camera on this phone when it's dark. I've had a chance to test it out indoors and I've also had the chance to test it out um, outdoors as well today. But I haven't really tested it out during night time. So yeah, so let's see how it does and let's go. After skipping for about 20 minutes to warm myself up, I would usually use a resistance band to do some stretches to avoid any injuries. I'm still trying to master the muscle up, so with the aid of resistance bands, I'm hopefully aiming to build that strength and explosive power over time. Then I would powder up and let's get into it. I like to start my workout with some dips and I usually do about 5 sets of 10 with about 30 seconds break between them. Then I'd go ahead and aim to do as many muscle ups as I possibly can using resistance bands. I mean the muscle ups look pretty clean, but I guess that's some progress. In regards to the phone camera, props to Apple for its performance, because it was actually ridiculously dark outside, and it still managed pretty well in my opinion, and I was actually blown away with how they came out when I was editing the footage. Alright guys, so I just basically completed my calisthenic session, so it's basically... 6, so 11 minutes past 6 and pretty much the battery's on 56% right now and that's the battery right there on 56% and also I was operating on this amount of brightness and I was also listening to music as well so yeah I guess it's holding up pretty well and let's just head back to the studio by the time I got back to the studio it was about 9.30pm I kind of lost track of time because I ended up going back home to shower and grab something to eat I got straight into it and started off by editing my footage for this day in the life video. For those of you that don't know, I edit all my videos on Premiere Pro. And since it's my first time recording a day in the life video, it does feel a little weird to edit. The photos that I showed you guys earlier in the video were all edited in Lightroom Mobile. I mean, as you can see, with the display and responsiveness on this phone, it's truly a pleasure to use. I then had to take a phone call which lasted for about an hour and then I ended up going through some of my emails using the Gmail app and replying to as many as possible as I've been falling behind lately. The final thing I had to do was go through my script and finalise everything before recording it. I've got my script opened up using the Notion app on the 15 Pro Max with Night Shift enabled. It took me about 50 minutes to record the audio and have it exported so that I can piece everything together tomorrow. I then edited some videos on CapCut and exported them I love how quickly this phone exports the videos, thanks to the help of the A17 Pro chip. The final thing to do was to have them ready to upload over on my Instagram and TikTok, so that I've got some content to upload the following day. So it's currently 12.45am right now, and my day is pretty much over. But before I put my phone to charge, let's talk about this phone a little. First and foremost, the phone battery was able to hold up pretty well, leaving me with 26% battery, considering that I used it pretty heavily doing some very demanding tasks on CapCut, Lightroom and even taking photos and videos. If you intend to be using the camera on this phone for professional videography, I would recommend using an external app like the Blackmagic camera app to provide you with more manual options and it allows you to film at 4K 60fps which is not possible with the normal camera app due to storage issues. The display is absolutely crisp and comes with Apple's ProMotion display that can go up to 120 hertz, so you can truly have that immersive experience. However, I would say the S23 Ultra is definitely better, but it doesn't take away from the fact that this one is also really good. The subtle tweak to the picture and sound quality have added dynamism and refinement to a delivery that was already amazing. The phone is absolutely gorgeous and very powerful with the A17 Pro chip, as well as an incredibly good camera. It's lighter and sleekier than its predecessor, it has the same long battery life and faster. The camera is also better, especially with the extra reach of that telephoto lens. It may not be a big enough reason to upgrade if you're coming from a 14 Pro Max or even a 13 Pro Max, as those are also incredibly powerful and future-proof. However, at first I did face some overheating issues with this phone, but since updating it, that's all been resolved. At the end of the day, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is another annual upgrade from Apple. And while it's not huge if you are coming from an iPhone 14 Pro Max, it is however very noticeable if you are on an older model such as the 12 Pro Max. It does feel like Apple are being a little uptight since they are still offering a storage size of 256GB 
especially since this phone has been marketed as a pro videographer tool. But to sum up, there's no doubt that it remains the best smartphone Apple makes for another year running, and I cannot wait to see what Apple will surprise us with in the future. But I would love to know what you guys think in the comments below. Now I'm going to finish off some final tasks that I have left, and whilst I do that, I'm going to charge up the phone using the charging cable provided, coupled with this Anker Nano Pro charger that comes equipped with an Active Shield safety system, dynamic temperature sensor, and power chip to safely adjust the power output and preserve the phone's battery in the long term. I will leave all the links to all the products mentioned in this video in the description below. And by the way, I'm no crazy productive person. I have left a few unchecked boxes from my to-do list, so I'm going to move those for tomorrow. This has been my day in the life and I hope you guys enjoyed the ride. I've been Ryan and I'll hopefully catch you guys on the next one. Take care.